3. Buddhism Gaynard was shocked to discover how near Buddhism came to being a great and beautiful religion without God, without a personal and universal deity. However, he did find some record of certain earlier beliefs which reflected something of the influence of the teachings of the Melchizedek missionaries who continued their work in India even to the times of Buddha. Jesus and Gaynard collected the following statements from the Buddhist literature. Out of a pure heart shall gladness spring forth to the infinite. All my being shall be at peace with this supermortal rejoicing. My soul is filled with content, and my heart overflows with the bliss of peaceful trust. I have no fear. I am free from anxiety. I dwell in security, and my enemies cannot harm me. I am satisfied with the fruits of my confidence. I have found the approach to the immortal easy of access. I pray for faith to sustain me on the long journey. I know that faith from beyond will not fail me. I know my brethren will prosper if they become imbued with the faith of the immortal, even the faith that creates modesty, uprightness, wisdom, courage, knowledge, and perseverance. Let us forsake sorrow and disown fear. By faith let us lay hold upon true righteousness and genuine manliness. Let us learn to meditate on justice and mercy. Faith is man's true wealth. It is the endowment of virtue and glory. Unrighteousness is contemptible. Sin is despicable. Evil is degrading, whether held in thought or wrought out in deeds. Pain and sorrow follow in the path of evil, as the dust follows the wind. Happiness and peace of mind follow pure thinking and virtuous living, as the shadow follows the substance of material things. Evil is the fruit of wrongly directed thinking. It is evil to see sin where there is no sin, to see no sin where there is sin. Evil is the path of false doctrines. Those who avoid evil by seeing things as they are gain joy by thus embracing the truth. Make an end of your misery by loathing sin. When you look up to the noble one, turn away from sin with a whole heart. Make no apology for evil, make no excuse for sin. By your efforts to make amends for past sins, you acquire strength to resist future tendencies thereto. Restraint is born of repentance. Leave no fault unconfessed to the Noble One. Cheerfulness and gladness are the rewards of deeds well done and to the glory of the immortal. No man can rob you of the liberty of your own mind. When the faith of your religion has emancipated your heart, when the mind, like a mountain, is settled and immovable, then shall the peace of the soul flow tranquilly like a river of waters. Those who are sure of salvation are forever free from lust, envy, hatred, and the delusions of wealth. While faith is the energy of the better life, nevertheless, must you work out your own salvation with perseverance. If you would be certain of your final salvation, then make sure that you sincerely seek to fulfill all righteousness. Cultivate the assurance of the heart which springs from within, and thus come to enjoy the ecstasy of eternal salvation. No religionist may hope to attain the enlightenment of immortal wisdom who persists in being slothful, indolent, feeble, idle, shameless, and selfish. But whoso is thoughtful, prudent, reflective, fervent, and earnest, even while he yet lives on earth, may attain the supreme enlightenment of the peace and liberty of divine wisdom. Remember, every act shall receive its reward. Evil results in sorrow, and sin ends in pain. Joy and happiness are the outcome of a good life. Even the evildoer enjoys a season of grace before the time of the full ripening of his evil deeds, but inevitably there must come the full harvest of evil doing. Let no man think lightly of sin, saying in his heart, The penalty of wrongdoing shall not come near me. What you do shall be done to you, in the judgment of wisdom. Injustice done to your fellows shall come back upon you. The creature cannot escape the destiny of his deeds. The fool has said in his heart, Evil shall not overtake me. But safety is found only when the soul craves reproof and the mind seeks wisdom. The wise man is a noble soul who is friendly in the midst of his enemies, tranquil among the turbulent, and generous among the grasping. Love of self is like weeds in a goodly field. Selfishness leads to grief. Perpetual care kills. The tamed mind yields happiness. He is the greatest of warriors who overcomes and subdues himself. Restraint in all things is good. 
He alone is a superior person who esteems virtue and is observant of his duty. Let not anger and hate master you. Speak harshly of no one. Contentment is the greatest wealth. What is given wisely is well saved. Do not do to others those things you would not wish done to you. Pay good for evil. Overcome evil with the good. A righteous soul is more to be desired than the sovereignty of all the earth. Immortality is the goal of sincerity, death the end of thoughtless living. Those who are earnest die not, the thoughtless are dead already. Blessed are they who have insight into the deathless state. Those who torture the living will hardly find happiness after death. The unselfish go to heaven, where they rejoice in the bliss of infinite liberality and continue to increase in noble generosity. Every mortal who thinks righteously, speaks nobly, and acts unselfishly shall not only enjoy virtue here during this brief life, but shall also, after the dissolution of the body, continue to enjoy the delights of heaven.